Hi, Tammy Poff here, owner of Poff Studio. And we teach lots and lots of weaving here on the Rigid Heddle Loom. I've got a bonus for all my weavers out there today. If you've taken my classes, you know that I strongly promote the idea that you should test swatch before you jump into a full-blown project. What I've advised is that you need a warp length of at least 30 to 32 inches so that when you roll this sample warp onto the loom, it'll catch on the back bottom beam and you won't accidentally pull threads off while you're trying to slay the reed. Well, now I've come up with a new method of warping for test swatches that allows just a 22 inch warp and you'll waste a lot less yarn. Let me show you how this works. I have here one of my favorite teaching tools, the shocked 15 inch wide Cricut Rigid Heddle Loom. And on here is a five dent reed that I'm going to use. I'll set that aside for the moment because I want to measure my warp first. And in testing this bulky rayon, the best place for the ball of yarn, as always, is on the floor when we're winding warp. I've measured to find out that the starting point here in front of the heddle block that holds the reed, around the back left leg, over to the right hand upright and back, is 44 inches. And that happens to be twice the length of the warp that I want to use for my test swatch. Now, to put six inches minimum width into this reed, which is what I recommend when you want to get the best results from your test swatch, I'll need 30 ends. So that means I've got to go around this perimeter 15 times. So here we go, ending at 15. Now in the corner where I started, if I make just one cut, I have 15 loops or 30 ends potentially. Let's just drape them from the loom frame on the right. And I'll grab these one at a time and fold them in half. Notice my apron rod, as it always should be, is up and over the back tension beam. Starting for me on the right, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to put the loop over the top of the apron rod and pull the two loose strands through the loop. And I'm going to place these loops, because I have an odd number, 15, I'll put eight on the right of the middle apron string and the other seven on the left. Okay, through the miracle of modern editing, I now have 15 loops, 30 ends on the back apron rod. I'll replace the reed in its neutral position now. And starting on the right, I'll take the first loop and I'm going to slay the loop, the threads through the reed. Because I'm warping six inches of a 15 inch reed, I will have to center it about four and a half inches on each side of my threads. So I'm going to measure four and a half inches from the right side, and that's the first slot I'll be dealing with. I'll be going through the front of the reed, which is different than our normal direct warping. Grab the first strand on that loop and pull it through the slot. The second strand will go through the hole. I like to put the hole threads up and over the top so that they're separate. That way I can see better and not skip any holes or slots. Okay, let's take the second strand and we'll pull through the slot, second thread through the hole. And so we continue all the way across. Okay, now we have all 30 ends in the reed. I'll take a moment to check that I haven't missed any holes or any slots and let the threads fall together in front. We'll space the loops on the back so that the warp goes fairly directly through the reed. Neaten up our little strings and roll this warp enough over the back beam so that the cut ends are seen in the front of the loom 
just ahead of the front apron rod, which will also be up and over the front tension beam, just an inch or two. Okay, now the last step. What we're going to do is take five strand bundles of yarn and instead of tying them on with knots and bows like we would do, we want to tie overhand knots that end real close to the warp cut ends. And I'm going to do that in five strand bundles all the way across little overhand knots here. And we'd like them to tighten in just about the same place all the way across if we can. And last but not least, you need some scrap yarn. We'll unroll a generous length here of scrap. And I want to tie this on to the front apron rod, right hand side, about three inches to the right of the center string. My plan is to run this string in between the warp threads. If you push down on the bundle of yarn, you'll separate holes and slots. Then you can pass the scrap yarn between the hole and the slot threads and catch that bundle of yarn and bring it to attention. Then the next one, push down, separate holes and slots, thread the scrap yarn through. Each time it'll go over the top of the front apron rod and around and catch the next bundle between holes and slots. And again, over the top and around with the scrap yarn. This wastes a lot less than tying bows and knots on the front. You can use this anytime you warp whenever you don't want fringe because you can see without the knots and bows we don't really have enough to make this front fringe. Okay, now what we're going to do before we tie the final knot in the scrap yarn, tie it to the front apron rod, is just check our tension Maybe put a, a little more tension on the overall warp. If there are any loose bundles here, I can simply make adjustments in that string and tie a double knot on the front. And voila. So if we check the warp again, and if we need to make any adjustments in the final tension, we're looking for consistency. Now you're ready to go ahead and weave a header, and you should be able to get at least six inches on your woven swatch, sufficient to test your new idea. So I'm hoping this makes the whole idea of sample warping more fun and easier for you to do. And you'll use a little less yarn, just maybe 30 to 40 yards of of yarn instead of the 50 to 60 of our previous method. Thanks for joining me and happy weaving.